Hi everyone, this is uh, Dr. Seuss, uh, also known as Citizen Seuss in my capacity. Um, how, again, how will we, will Donald Trump and we get reinfected with this coronavirus? Um, I think the short answer here is yes, we probably will be infected by a strain or a mutated strain of this. That's, I guess you would say the bad news. All this notion that we won't get sick after we have it uh, will, um, will, I think, be shown to be a little too optimistic. But the good news is this. The good news is that um, we can use this virus, and it's shown us how, to develop a comprehensive way to work with whatever partial vaccines we come on to have a full-scale comprehensive approach to what is now looking like a full-scale comprehensive virus. In my last video, I asked, how do you combat a hybrid virus and show that the COVID-19 virus is a hybrid of respiratory, blood, immune, and nerve? And I've done that in previous videos as well. We cannot just target one function of this virus. It has several functions and those functions work together and we have to address them together. So let put me down into the corner here and get to the regular question. Um, this is now affirmed. I mean, this is a, a fairly recent article in The Guardian. Uh, let's see what the date is on this one. Um, it's within the last week or so, anyway, of this recording. So I'm not seeing the actual date. Oh, here it is, October 17th. So just in a few days ago. But it says, COVID reinfections to be expected as the virus spreads, says government scientists. Okay. And again, why they are saying that is they are already finding certain cases. There, are, there was a case in Hong Kong where the person had uh, lesser symptoms. And I've already said this in past things that lesser symptoms uh, are a way, um, are normally what happens with the body as they learn to deal with the virus. Now, we also had a guy in Nevada who got greater symptoms. But what I suspect happened there was he got the strain, which was the milder strain from China that came through the West Coast. And then he got exposed to the much more harsh strain, the one that came by way of Europe onto the East Coast of the United States. So if that's the case, then you can kind of expect that they're slightly different. And we've seen this with flu vaccines. Some flu vaccines have had 0% efficacy because they simply miss the protein sequencing. If the strain has mutated enough, your body has to learn a new trick. And in that learning, sometimes it can be somewhat painful, but there's still basic underlying health practices that are gonna be very, very helpful in any condition. And even if there is a successful vaccine, when I say successful, I mean partially successful, that gets rid of or takes out certain functions of the virus itself, I don't think a vaccine will be comprehensive and be able to get rid of the whole thing. That's gonna be part of our responsibility to only see immunization or vaccine as part of a more comprehensive approach. We can't just look for the golden you know, pill or the silver bullet. We've been taught that with all the drug ads on TV, but now this virus is revealing to us and showing us something very important. It's showing us that our own health and our responsible choices around our health are gonna be absolutely critical. And that's already been shown to be the case. If you get great sleep, if you hydrate, if you do nasal breathing and relaxation, if you do exercise, if you eat non-inflammatory, mostly whole food, whole uh, plant-based food, um, and you, uh, as a course of your life, if you begin to shift in those directions, your ability to not just, I wouldn't say combat, that's too military a term, your ability to establish equilibrium with this virus becomes much greater. And the people who are able to do this well, as we've seen with this virus, get almost no symptoms at all. And uh, certainly with the younger children and so forth, the, the vitality of their body is handling this. This virus is teaching us how to be young if we want to survive. <laughs> and that has great benefits for us, uh, for us in terms of the world in general. Now let's take a, a, a closer look into this. Let's take a closer look into this on the science, on the science article here. Um, here's the update on, on Trump. Um, and here's what he got. 
If you notice the thing about Trump, and I said this a long time ago, people were touting hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. And in another video, I show you why those weren't effective and that vitamin D was far more effective than both. Trump actually took vitamin D and did not take hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> okay, that's what happens when you actually look at the real science of this and, the, and look at real clinical studies to see what does work and doesn't. The drug companies want you to believe that they have all this expertise and technology, but it's turning out more and more that equipping our body with the proper vitamins and underlying abilities he was also given, uh, Trump was also given zinc, by the way. And I've added two to that, vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C, especially intervenous C, which has shown me work clinically. And another one that I'm gonna talk about in a separate video, vitamin B3 in its nicotinamide uh, form, the one that doesn't need as much liver processing is critical to beginning to manage. It's much like vitamin D3 and beginning to manage the inflammatory response in the immune system vitamin b3 in its niacinamide or nicotinamide form seems to be able to modulate inflammation with regard to that and to b cells and t cells so we're going to look at that um either in this video or another uh, probably a, a, a we're going to touch upon it in this video but we're going to discuss it in greater detail in another video so what did trump take well and here is the question and I'll make a prediction right now. I think Trump is going to have a resurgence of symptoms because we've already found that the antibody, B antibody levels, and we'll talk about B antibodies later, go down over time. And he was basically given a cocktail of these monoclonal antibodies to help deal immediately with his COVID infection. And he was given other things to help manage his response. He was given that, he was given remdesivir, which is supposed to get in the way of, uh, of, of viral replication, okay, to slow down viral replication. The antibodies are dealing, trying to eliminate the viruses. And he was also given a steroid to handle the inflammatory response. Again, this regimen was called together from research and clinical studies that showed that there were different aspects of it. You notice it's a comprehensive reproach again. You don't give one of these and you just give a couple of them. Then for instance, you don't give the dexamethasone, which is the steroid that eliminate inflammation, that inflama inflammatory response might take over the body and send him over the edge. You don't give the monoclonal antibodies. You may not have enough immediate antibodies to fight off the infection to begin with. You don't give the remdesivir or something natural that serves like remdesivir does in order to limit the replication. And we'll see that niacinamide may form that function. And then on top of these quote unquote more natural ones, okay, what? Zinc, vitamin D, femotidine, fem femotidine, melatonin, and daily aspirin. Again, daily aspirin is a blood thinner having to do with dealing with the clotting aspects of this virus, which is very unusual. I've talked about that in past videos. Melatonin, what did I tell you? Sleep, right? In order to bring that uh, inflammatory response down and get the parasympathetic nerve health going, you need sleep. And Trump is notorious for getting zero sleep, uh, like two or three hours and just being on the tweet 29-7. That's another reason why I think that Trump is very likely to have a resurgence of this disease. It's in his body now. It's being managed by this particular regimen but his lifestyle habits, his, he's male, he's obese, he has heart condition, he lives, he eats awful food and doesn't get the sleep. As far as I know, he gets little to no exercise except maybe walking around a golf, uh, a golf course. So these things line him up or set him up, unfortunately by his own choice to be met with, it's not so much a reinfection, it will be a reemergence of those symptoms just like in herpes or HIV. Even in HIV, as I said in past videos, in herpes, usually your body reaches an equilibrium, a person gets an initial symptoms, and then the next bout is less, and the next bout is less, and it just keeps going down to usually most people don't have little to no symptoms until they have a very stressful event, or they're really running not getting enough sleep, or they're not allowing balance to be in their lives. And then that's when that virus begins to reemerge. 
and that's also when you can infect other people. Now, it's especially important for this virus precisely because you don't have to sleep with them to infect them, okay? Even though it's a blood virus, it's got this hybrid function, so it can come out of your mouth. Let's say you're in a very stressful state and all of a sudden these, these uh, viral load just really increases. And let's say it was in your system and you go ahead and breathe on someone and they haven't been infected, you could pass it along that way. So again, it's not only teaching us to be more personally helpful and aware, especially about symptoms, but also more socially aware. And, uh, and I don't think that's a bad thing in the end if we can learn from it. All right, so what's going on here? Here's the deal. Here's uh, coronavirus B cells and T cells explained. Our response to this virus is going to have to be comprehensive as this virus is a hybrid virus, okay? So let's look at um, B cells and T cells, okay? Here's the first thing. We have two forms. We have an innate immune system and an acquired immune system. Innate has to do with our memory, our, basically our immune intelligence, oftentimes created through exposure, created through mechanisms in our body that come genetically and so forth. But our acquired ones it is where we're at our learning. We learn every new microbe that comes, bacteria, virus, and other that comes into our body, teaches us something new. When we have a healthy, comprehensively healthy life, along the lines that I've told you, then these things operate largely correctly. If we're living indoors, all the blue light and electronic pollution depressing our vitamin D levels, which was a major, major factor in fatality, just vitamin D alone on some studies show, show that we could have had 50% fewer people die if they just had had adequate vitamin D. What does vitamin D do? It helps to manage the inflammatory response during your immune uh, responses. It helps to tonify the blood and helps it react in ways that that will be much more helpful. Again, it's like anything else, you know, if you starved yourself or you failed to drink any kind of water, and then you went out on a long, intense run, you, you, you would conk out in the middle of that. And the same is true of your immune system. You know, you, you need the electrolytes, you need the sleep, you need the things that will allow you to perform and your body to perform at an optimal level. And you're almost never talk, taught about that. You're always taught, oh, this drug is gonna take care of it or that other thing. In fact, we're learning more and more that many of these vaccines create a counterproductive effect because of the way that they're provoking the immune system doesn't allow for that comprehensive, healthy response, and it has its own problems. We'll talk about that later, but right now let's talk about T cells and B cells. Um, there are two key cell types, B cells and T cells, brought into play in this adaptive immune system. And the T cells are further uh, grouped into two subtypes, CD4 plus and CD8 plus. CD4 plus are helper T cells that help the activity of other immune cells by releasing cytokines. Now this is critical. Cytokines prime the maturation of B cells. Those are the ones that go much more immediately into the situation, okay? Which become plasma cells and produce antibodies to neutralize the pathogen, okay? So they're very inflammatory. And the CD4 cells, when they release a lot of cytokines, can create a maladaptive, almost autoimmune overreaction if too many of them are around. Niacinamide helps to manage so that the, there is not an overproduction of those CD4 plus cells and to keep that cytokine storm manageable. Now, CD8 plus cytotoxic T cells, on the other hand, directly kill infected cells. In many ways, that's what you want. They're not inflammatory and they're neutralizing antibodies. Well, not so much antibodies, but they're neutralizing uh, T cells that go right at it, okay? So once the adaptive immune system has vanquished the invader, a pool of long-lived T and B cells are made. These memory lymphocytes remain dormant until the next time they encounter the same pathogen. This time though, they produce a much faster and stronger immune reaction Memory is the key feature of the adaptive immune system enabling long-term protection. Now you have to understand part of why 
vaccine, the production of vaccines is so important and the testing of them is so important because a lot of them aren't properly tested and they just say, did they get an immune response? But if you've got an over-inflammatory immune response and one that froze out or diverted a much more effective long-term body-based approach, that's these T8 cells or whatever, then you would then you might actually be detracting from a more effective and comprehensive approach to an actual disease. Again, we can't simply rely only on the vaccine. The vaccine is one tool among many, and sometimes that tool is not necessary, and sometimes it can even be counterproductive if it, it doesn't fit right with the particular virus or disease we're dealing with. We saw that, and I showed this in my previous videos, where the vaccine was created for dengue that actually killed people from this overreactive antibody dependent enhancement of the disease when people subsequently got other diseases. If you disable the learning mechanism and the buffering mechanisms of the body and you misdirect it to handle an immediate problem, it's like fire suppression, right? Um, then what you can do is eliminate the kind of education and development of strength in your body to actually uh, to deal with a much more uh, a powerful pathogen in the future. And that is critical. Remember fire suppression, and now we do prescribed burns. Why do we do prescribed burns? Why do people expose the kids to dirt now instead of, instead of antimicrobial soaps? Because they're realizing our body needs to learn how to engage those microbes that are in the soil and things around us instead of having everything antiseptic. Just like fire suppression <clears throat> in these, um, these population areas near forests, when you keep suppressing it, and then a fire finally comes, all that uncleared out, unburned out area erupts in an intense inferno that wipes out people and lives. Very similar in your immune response. We need prescribed burns. We need some exposure to these things. We need to strengthen our own immune system. We need to tailor our lifestyles to be more adaptive and more supportive of our own innate immune responses and equip our acquired immune responses to learn faster and to deliver in a stronger way when we get there. So those are all, those are all important. And here is a, it, this, I love this one. This is again, a one that I think was Zach Bush had referred to in an earlier one. I also referred to it in a, an earlier one of mine, but here's the crazy thing about it. A normal healthy person has all these viruses in them. Okay, this is a, this is a, a peer reviewed publication um, uh, published online on, on this NIH site. But here's what it said. We mapped sequences to 94 different viruses, including sequences from 19 human DNA viruses, proviruses and RNA viruses, herpes virus, papilloviruses, okay? They had HIV in there, hepatitis B and C. I mean, we had the influenza. And they said in 42% of the study participants, they mapped them. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, so you're, you're, you're having the presentation and accommodation of a whole bunch. I said in another video, it said something like two thirds of the population over 50 in the entire world has herpes one. Two thirds, because <clears throat> Our bodies, our populations and our bodies have become accommodated and they remembered from other viruses and so forth. And when we lead a fairly healthy life, we don't even necessarily get the symptoms. I'm not suggesting that this is the only thing we need to do. So don't call this anti-science or anti-vax, okay? I'm a middle vaxxer, I've said that in previous things. I believe vaccines properly constructed and tested can be one tool in what I call immune therapy and what other people like uh, RFK Jr. call immune therapy, but it shouldn't be the first one. And it should simply also be one tool and not a cure-all. So again, immune cells, here's another article here on NIH director's blog, immune T cells may offer lasting protection against COVID-19. I'm just gonna go ahead and read these two paragraphs. Much of the study on immune response to SARS-CoV-2, the novel coronavirus that causes COVID-19, has focused on the production of antibodies. But in fact, human cells known as memory T cells also play an important role in the ability of our immune system to protect us against many viral infections, including, it now appears, COVID-19. 
An intriguing new study of these memory T cells suggests that they might protect some people people newly infected with SARS-CoV-2 by remembering past encounters with other human coronaviruses. So instead of just trying to suppress that fire, letting less lethal coronaviruses in teach us how to deal with the more lethal ones. That's what you can get from this. And unfortunately, a lot of the flu uh, uh, vaccines that go against coronaviruses do a bit of an end run around that. They provoke a response that doesn't allow for full and comprehensive education of the body or response of the body. And it can, if your body responds to this, not all do, but some do, it can set you up for what's called an antibody dependent enhancement of the next disease, where you're either distracted or you're uneducated. Your body's uneducated to deal with that, and all of a sudden now you're in real trouble. Okay, so this might potentially explain why, I'm going back to the, the text here, explain why some people seem to fend off the virus and may be less susceptible to becoming severely ill with COVID-19. So um, let's move on uh, here. And I'll try to keep this under half an hour if I can. Another si report uh, uh, detailed in science, deep immune profiling of COVID-19 patients reveals distinct immunotypes with therapeutic implications. Again. When you have a more comprehensive approach, okay, and your body has greater capability, you will be better able to fight off any disease, including SARS-CoV-2 virus, COVID-19. So analysis of 125 hospitalized COVID-19 patients revealed that although CD4 and CD8 T cells were activated in some patients, T cell responses were limited in others. In many patients, CD4 and CD8 T cell proliferation, okay, were consistent with antiviral responses observed in other infections. Again, these certain people have exercised their CD4 and CD8 functions, just like exercising your body allows you to be stronger, less able to get injured, okay? So too with your immune system. This is what this is showing. When they say variability of response, why are some people having almost no symptoms or asymptomatic at all with COVID-19? Well, you know, on a few cases, it might be genetic, okay? You might have some kind of genetic advantage there. But in many cases, I will bet you dimes to dollars, it has to do with that person doing the underlying lifestyle things and allowing themselves to be in a managed way exposed to disease. You don't wanna do it in an unmanaged way, okay? Certain diseases, we even had our son vaccinated for certain diseases when we went to the Philippines because his body was not ready for those kinds of native viruses. He didn't grow up in that soil in that culture, eating those foods. So if you aren't prepared, vaccines oftentimes are advised for certain things, okay? So again, not anti-vax here, just smart vax. Um, and so let's go here. So when it says selective and cross-reactive SARS-CoV-2 cell epitopes and unexpused human, it sounds very thing, but cross-reactive means, again, that previous coronaviruses educated your body to deal more effectively with a novel coronavirus. The novel coronavirus means new, okay, has new attributes, new protein strands, okay. Um, it's not the same, or even if it's a mutation of the same strand, okay, it's, it's new, okay, it's going to have different protein sequences when it, when it mutates. It says, in here, it says, we demonstrate a range of pre-existing memory CD4 T cells that are cross-reactive with comparable affinity to SARS-CoV-2 and common cold coronaviruses and so forth and so on. Thus, variegated, that means various, T cell memory to coronaviruses that cause the common cold may underlie at least some of the extensive heterogeneity observed in coronavirus disease. What does that mean in plain English? It simply means that if you've been exposed to a variety of coronaviruses and the common cold and flus are those variety of, so teachers actually should be in pretty good shape on this one, you will probably be more educated and stronger and more equipped to deal with a novel one like SARS-CoV-2. It seems to indicate that that may explain the widely varying reactions to SARS-CoV-2 or the COVID-19 virus. So let's go ahead to the next one. Vaccine-induced CD4 T cells lead to adverse effects. Okay, 
I'm just going to read this part here, the summary. A vaccine that elicits only CD4 T cells resulted in an overwhelmingly inflammatory response. And here's another thing. It's not just about T cells or getting T cells to enter the picture. If you have too many CD4 T cells, which create a cytokine storm and an inflammatory response, you actually could have the equivalent of an autoimmune response, which becomes more damaging than helpful. So what does it mean? We need something that can help modulate CD4, just like with omega-6s and omega-3 fatty acids. When you get too many omega-6s, you become really amped up. Your system becomes amped up and your body starts to break down. That's why fish oil, or if you're a vegan like me, um, linseed oil and there's certain algal uh, long chain uh, omega-3s. When you bring that ratio together, back together again, all of a sudden your body is calm, your mood is affected, okay? And your body is able to have the balance it needs. Same here, I will talk about niacinamide, but niacinamide and NAD plus helps to regulate the CD4 ratio with the CD8s, okay? So that you don't have an overwhelming inflammatory response. And we will talk about that in another video, but again, let's just finish this out. Because the body's immune system produces both B cells, which make antibodies to neutralize the invading pathogen, and T cells, which directly destroy the virus. There are two types of T cells, CD8 and CD4, which battle invading pathogens. Okay, the CD8 T cells take the lead in eliminating virally infected cells, while the CD4 helper T cells function indirectly. So generally speaking, you want more of the direct. It doesn't have the inflammatory effect, and it gets right in there. The other one is more of a signaling cell, the CD4, and they use cytokines to help signal, hey, the house is on fire. And the T cell based vaccines are designed to activate this type of immune response. Again, really want to have things that balance T, uh, uh, the, the uh, C4, uh, CD4 and CD8 T cells, and really emphasize more the CD8 to help make that happen. Okay? And it'd be very interesting to see what would help increase the production of CD8 cells, and certainly also what kinds of things balance them out. From my research, it looks like vitamin B3, not in its niacinamide form, has some promise, and there are, are actual peer-reviewed publications that show that. So here we are. Understanding T cell activation could lead to new vaccines. We are in desperate need of these new vaccines. If we could find vaccines that did, the CD8 T cell vaccine, and that helped the body remember and educate itself, then we would have true immune therapy. Then we would have something that's not just provoking a response, that's not just suppressing our, uh, our, our engagement with microbes and setting us up for a fatal maybe interaction or very painful interaction down the road with antibody dependent enhancement, Instead, we'd be using the vaccines and the vaccine therapy, immune therapy, alongside of the body's natural education and response mechanisms. And that cooperative versus militaristic and competitive, you know, war on microbes thing is where we need to go. I'm absolutely, absolutely committed to that and I absolutely believe that. So again, not anti-vax, smart vax. Vax that helps the body. Just like I'm, you know, in favor of vitamins versus steroids, right? Help yourself as an as an as a male now beyond my fifties, produce use diet and and exercise in ways that help to produce my own testosterone versus taking a supplement. What is taking a supplement a testosterone supplement? It diminishes my own body's ability to produce it. So again, when I do that, then I become weaker and more reliant on something and we get into a vicious cycle. When I do the other, which is to create exercises and diets and so forth that provide those things, and I use supplements and bring in supplements that help my body do it, just like effective immune therapy, then I'm on the right track. If I do something that replaces my body's function, then I'm on the wrong track. So those two things is really important to keep in mind here. It says here, most uh, current vaccines work by stimulating a class of white blood cells called B cells. We talked about that. For decades, science have been seeking a new type of vaccine that activates another player, the T cell. A small number of an 
a type of T cell called memory T cells are generated following an infection or immunization. Some memory T cells patrol the body looking for repeat infections, while others migrate into organs and remain there. These are called the tissue resident memory cells. These cells can be found where viruses and bacteria can get into the body, such as the skin, the gut, and again, that's why gut health is so important, everybody. <laughs> Okay, and the female reproductive tract, as well as organs that are highly prone to injury, such as the brain. So if we could have immune therapy and health practices that not only stimulate these memory cells, but get them impregnated into all the different parts of our body, we are well fortified for whatever comes our way. And again, because they're cross-reactive, even if it's not exactly the same, oftentimes it can be recognized and dealt with at least partially by what we already have. Moving on here. Again, I won't, I'll just read out the title here because I don't have to go further on. I will have all these in the references. NAD plus released during inflammation participates in T cell homeostasis. And NAD plus, okay, comes from nicotinamide and that vitamin B, okay? Niacinamide, okay? So again, there's the link between the vitamin D and the niacinamide and your immune response. I will do another video on this. Again, uh, we're looking at something, you know, we're looking at these things coming out. The cases are going up, the deaths are going down because we are managing this a little bit better. In fact, um, I want a pal here on uh, Peak Prosperity uh, shared this, which was this theory of herd immunity that involves pre-existing immunity, that would be the memory, right? Possibly cellular T cell immunity, either full or partial, having a person part of the population, okay? And then that would be the X. There's a Y percent that exposed, but don't develop antibodies. Um, and T cell immunity or other cellular immunity happenings. And then there's a percentage of traditional B cell antibodies. I, I believe that what Trump got was the B cell antibodies. But what we found with that, and this is why they're so dangerous, is that they fall off dramatically after sometimes in a period of days or weeks. So Trump, if he's moving out there and he's having all these rallies and he's relying on his B cells and his T cells and the rest of his body not being educated and he has the underlying health conditions, I think there is a very, very dramatically good chance that he could experience a reawakening of these symptoms, even to the point of fatality. So he better be careful to look at these other things. And then finally, there's social behavioral changes. And again, masks, they have some nominal ability, but it is real ability, the social distancing even more so. Conventional and non-conventional science supports that. So these combinations of things added together can help us as a society and as individuals do better when it comes to facing this virus. Again, this is sort of showing what's gonna happen in the next video. I will look at the role of niacinamide in creating this NAD plus and creating this buffering with regard to T cells. And uh, I think it's going to be an important addition. I use niacinamide, uh, I'm not recommending it and nothing in this should be construed as medical advice, but I have integrated into my diet now, niacinamide into my supplementation as well as uh, omega-3s to create that balancing, as well as vitamin D to create that blood balancing. So I am trying to enhance my body's ability to do what it naturally does better, just like you would when you have, have uh, um, not alkalines, but uh, 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 water and salts and food when you're going to go exercise or you're going to go work. You enhance your body to the things that allow your body to do it better. And of course you use organic and you use great straightforward whole foods to do that best. So again, um, uh, thank you for, for, for taking the time to do this. Um, please, if you, if you like this, uh, there's, a, there's a place that you can donate straight to this YouTube site. Uh, please click on the button below um, and uh, to, to subscribe. And certainly share it with your with your friends because I think again this is important information. It's information that gets beyond the fear on one side and the over conventional science and the complete ignorance and hysteria on another side that says that this is all conspiracy or there's nothing to this. 
This virus is an actual invitation for us to be smarter and stronger. And neither fear nor ignorance is going to help us do that. Let's be knowledgeable. Let's be strong. Until then, until next time, it's Citizen Zeus signing off.